Hi guys, it's Mary. Welcome back. It's so good to see you. I'm so happy that you're here. I can't wait to talk to you, see how you've been, read what you have to say. Let's just do this look, which, you know, is a combination of a couple of drugstore um, foundations that <laughs> didn't cost very much and I really like. So liking that look. And yeah, we're gonna use some Sydney Grace eyeshadows and we're just gonna do a whole bunch of stuff. So let's get going. How are you guys? How you doing? I am uh, gonna be going to the doctor and we're gonna be doing my blood work. Several of you have asked me about the keto diet and will I talk about it or what I've been doing actually. I don't necessarily say it's keto. So this blood work is gonna determine what happens with me next. I've always, always, for the last 30 years, my doctors have always tried to get me to do a statin and I've complied for short periods of time here and there and always took myself off because I just feel like no, statins are not the answer and my LDL has always been high my total cholesterol high they've said to me for 30 plus years now you're a walking heart attack you're basically a solid I could hear your arteries slam as soon as you walked in the door and I've argued with them and argued with them and then they did a cat scan of my arteries um, like a year ago and came up like a pinpoint of plaque that's it after all this time. I have always said that I thought there was more to the cholesterol thing, you know. It is very important for me to stop this and tell you, of course, I'm sure you already know, this is me. I'm not a medical doctor. I cannot diagnose these things and you shouldn't follow what I'm doing for your own self. You should check with your physician about your LDL or anything else I talk about with my medical stuff. So anyway, I'm expecting my HDL to be up, except for the fact that for the last three months I've not been walking and exercising, which is not gonna help it at all. Uh, I'm expecting my triglets to be down. And depending on how elevated the LDL is, I mean, I just don't know what I'm gonna do, but I don't wanna get on my channel and like go, this is what I did, you know, um, if it's actually really harming me. But that's what we do and we go into the doctor. Feeling kinda, you know, there's like a migraine coming on back here. Eyes are all puffy, not feeling my greatest, and I think some of it is stress, I really do. Anyway, so next chapter is the glitzyfritzy.com store is no more, it's gone. And I wanted to make sure that I said thank you to all of the people for the last three, four years who helped me uh, with that store and what by help I mean purchases you just don't know how much that that helped me the thing that I've done for a living for the past 20 some years I It's gone. I don't have it anymore. I have this YouTube channel and I have that jewelry store and You know just trying to pay the utilities just trying to pay my internet and you guys have no idea how much that helped me. But it got to the point because I wasn't constantly talking about it anymore. Everybody kind of like forgot about it and it was costing me more money to have it than it was to have it because websites, they like um, cost money. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure that I thanked all of you who have helped me sell jewelry in that store or purchase jewelry in that store because you just don't know what it meant. Today I'm gonna mix two foundations. <laughs> I like them both, they're both from the drugstore. This is the Maybelline Dream Radiant Liquid and this is the e.l.f. And this one is just a tad bit too light. This one's just a tad bit too dark. And I think if I mix them together, what would happen? Would I come up with still a formula I like and a shade that I like? So that's what we're gonna do. <laughs> But anyway, back to the thank yous. For those of you who don't know it, I had this store and my husband helped me start it to try and generate some income, you know, and 
it helped a lot that I had a YouTube channel with friends. I think that might do it. Initially, it was taken off and it was going to be like a really good thing. It was all a good thing. I mean that initially it was just going to be that jewelry, not have wholesalers, jewelry in multiples in stock. You know what I mean? So, and a lot of people thought that I was actually making that jewelry myself, which is a comedy, right? Because I can't even keep from fumbling a mascara and dropping it. <laughs> and then this funny thing happened. Oh, do you guys know Melissa 55? Because I'm going to tell you something. You never met a nicer person. I'm serious. Melissa doesn't have a mean bone in her body. When this store opened, she found a pair of earrings that she really liked. And they were threaders with a solitary uh, crystal on the end of them. Uh, but the thing about my store was that my jewelry was coming from auctions of d big department stores. Macy's, Bloomingdale's, D uh, Dillard's, um, Nordstrom, you get the idea. If you could go on their floor and purchase, not real jewelry, but you know, upper end costume jewelry, INC, Charter Club, um, you know, that kind of stuff. When they would pull the stock for new stock to come in, so shelf pulls, they'd auction this stuff off and then I would buy it at auction. Then I'd bring it to my store to sell it. But here was the thing. Most of the time, you only had like one item. Not one item. <laughs> you might have like one of this particular kind of earring. I mean, you would get a lot of like 300 pieces of jewelry, but maybe you would only have one pair of this particular pair of earrings. And then there wasn't another thing like it. It was just this one thing. Occasionally you might get, you know, two, maybe three, but that was rare. So this pair of earrings <laughs> that Melissa bought, she loved a lot, but there was only a few pair of it. Long story short, <laughs> because they're threaders and if you don't have backs on threader earrings they can tend to get lost <laughs> they can slide right out of your ear before you ever even know it and that happened to melissa so she came and she wanted to get another pair because she lost one and she told her audience how much she loved these earrings and then they came and wanted the earrings <laughs> and i went oh. back then melissa probably had about mm, 60,000 subscribers she now has over a hundred thousand. So let me tell you, if you do not know the power of 60,000 people who like you a lot. <laughs> so I needed to find a wholesale distributor that could get me these earrings and fast. And I did. Don't get me wrong. Other people had earrings in the store, showed them on their channels, talked about them and people loved those too and bought them. And that was all good. And I'm so thankful to everybody. I really, really am. The people who bought them, the people who had earrings in my store that talked about them, mwah, thank you, you have no idea how much you helped our family. But with Melissa being one of the largest um, mature YouTubers in our community, when Melissa talked, everybody listened. And all Melissa had to do was just mention these earrings in an Instagram post on her YouTube channel. Whatever, I never knew it was gonna happen. I knew it had happened because the sales on my website were going bam, 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 just like that. And here's the thing, Melissa never tries to sell anybody anything. In fact, <laughs> she, she has links in her description box so that you don't have to click the affiliate links. If you like Melissa, why on God's green earth would you go down to her description box and go, ha ha, I'm going to buy the one that doesn't give her anything. <laughs> really? She does list both though. <laughs> but anyway, the, the point of me saying that is that Melissa never tells anybody anything so that you'll buy it. Trust me when I say I know Melissa 55's heart, her spirit, her soul. She is my good friend, okay? And when I tell you that she does not have a mean bone in her body, that she would do anything to help anyone, that she doesn't do things so that you, she will profit. I mean, what does she get? If you go buy earrings from me, what does she get? Nothing. <laughs> she gets nothing except in my undying gratitude. 
she gets nothing for it. And she never even told me any of the times that she did this, that she was gonna do it, right? The reason I'm saying this is because, and I shouldn't be doing my eye makeup while I'm saying this, because I don't wanna cry. <laughs> I have plenty, trust me. I have cried plenty because without these YouTube ladies, I, I, I would have been in trouble. Melissa specifically paid three of my car payments when I still had a car payment. Three of them were able to be made and I needed it too, okay? Three of them were able to be made because Melissa said, oh, I just love these earrings so much. I got them from Glitzy Fritzy store. Let's move on to something else that's not going to make me cry, but I just wanted to say that the store's gone now, but Come here, you guys. You have no idea what, what you buying from my store and what you plugging my store meant to me. Come here. I need to quit jacking around here and get to the point and get going or else, you know, because it's later than, I'm, than I realize. I think I'm going to use this Cover FX palette today. What do you say? Oh, that rhymed. <laughs> World's greatest rhymer. You got to be careful with this blush. <laughs> So I'm just tapping, like I went like this, and now I'm just tapping. <laughs> tap, tap, tap a -roo. Uh, That was for you, Lori. <laughs> tap, tap, tap a -roo. Well, the camera shut off there. <laughs> Where were we? Um, I'm gonna move into this Sydney Grace palette that I need to put away, because there's other stuff I'm supposed to be doing. You know, like I forgot to use this blush. This is new Sydney Grace stuff that I got in, and I'm gonna double blush. Let's do that. I'm gonna try not to hit the camera and make it shut off again. This blush is called Time Stops. And I'm just gonna, oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, why wouldn't their blushes be really pigmented? <laughs> All right, let's just put that down for a second. I have to fix this. <laughs> oh my gosh, okay. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I did that without testing it first. <laughs> Woo! I mean, I, I tested it on my hand when I got it, but <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right, let's get that Juno powder back out again. <laughs> we need to buff. I'm going to use powder in my brows today, I think. The last time that we were together and we were discussing things, remembering things. We were talking about my grandma and your grandparents too. And I wanted to let you guys know that I read them all and I enjoy them and I read them out loud to my family. And I really, really enjoyed reading the comments for that and hearing about your grandparents and your remembrances. You guys always say stuff that reminds me of other things, you know, like several of you were talking about um, growing up on a farm. We would go down to the fish fry at our relatives in Kentucky. <laughs> and they had a tobacco farm, big, big tobacco farm. And my memories of that place are just as vivid you know, I mean, like, I remember when we would go there, and of course, we're staying all night, right? And the house that they had, the, the main house, I mean, because all their kids grew up and they had houses on the land, too. But the main house that started it all, they built that by hand. Like, they had a room that they built, and then they just added on to it all as they went. You know, as the years went by, they add another room, add another room. And for the longest time of my childhood, when we would go down there, they had an outhouse and I would hold it. Like I was not, I was so scared that I was gonna fall in the hole uh, and be in there with the poo and the, oh God. I was so scared of that, that I would hold it until I was just so in so much pain, daddy would have to, carry me because I couldn't walk anymore. And I remember that they had this dog. And remember, you know, back then kids fed their dogs whatever they were eating, you know. They got the table scraps. You gathered up all of the food off of the table in a bowl and then took it out and gave it to the dog. <laughs> I'm gonna use my Sonia G Worker 3 and I think what I'm gonna do is what I wanted to do and forgot that first day when I talked about the Enduring Love palette was I wanted to just take this purple color here, which is Abigail. And look, I just pressed down there. Take Abigail and go from lid all the way up. 
I'm going to come in my crease with it, even though it is um, a shimmer shade. That's what I'm going to do. Just start right in the middle. And, you know, that's where I want it to be the darkest. And I'm just going to gradually bring it up. And then we'll go over the lid part in the middle with one of the new purple shades I bought. How about that? Okay. I like that idea too. <laughs> okay. So now I'm flipping the brush the other way and just kind of working it up into the crease and it will gradually fade as I go. And we need to get a blender too. I'm just going to take this Tom Ford blender as I go up and soften it out. Uh, but anyway, like, you know what, if I grew up on that farm, I would have been a vegetarian for sure. <laughs> I know this because every time that we would go there, I wouldn't eat meat because I was acutely aware then of the cow <laughs> and the pig. <laughs> they were there on the farm <laughs> because on one of the trips down there, I learned that that's where the meat came from. <laughs> was, yeah, yeah, bacon comes from that pig, and, you know, uh, the burger came from here. There's just something about pulling up in a McDonald's uh, drive-up that helps you disconnect from what that is, right? And also in saying that, I want you to know that I am a big, big carnivore. <laughs> I love my meat, but, you know, if I'm sitting right across from the actual animal, I can't eat it. <laughs> I just can't do that. Now, a whole bunch of people are probably going to show up now and give me grief over that. But just know that God says it's okay for me to eat this stuff. And one of my favorite things about summer, of course, is getting to eat tomatoes. And when I say that, I want you to understand that I will order tomatoes and I will buy them. And this is, this is really stupid, guys. I will go to the store. I will buy tomatoes. I will put them on a salad and not eat them. <laughs> I guess I just want to look at them. I don't know why I do this. Tomatoes at the store do not taste like tomatoes, and I am very aware of it, okay? Tomatoes is one of my favorite things, and when summer comes around, there's two things that I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about peaches, I'm thinking about tomatoes, and not in that order. I'm thinking about tomatoes first, and you know, the garden vegetables that I'm gonna get from somewhere, and I love them so much but they had, you know, vegetables and stuff growing on this farm as well. I remember taking a salt shaker with my mom and going and sitting right down in the middle of the tomato patch and just picking a tomato and salt and eat, salt and eat. I will just mow down on a tomato. It doesn't have to be salted, but that's what we did. And it was good. It was a good time. They would take all of the fish that they had froze from fishing on the ponds all year and have a fish fry and the barn would be opened up and there wasn't tobacco in it anymore the tobacco had already gone to market and they would have all these tables set up with all this food and it was just we looked forward to doing that all year at the same time we also knew that if it was time for the fish fry it was time to go back to school oh and they had these phones remember when i talked to you before about party line back then not only did they have this but you didn't need a phone number. It was like your house was a number, like five. <laughs> That's your number, you just call five. You just pick up the phone and tell the operator that you want five <laughs> you know, or whatever. I wanna use one of the new shades I bought. So, hmm, this one is called Totally Worth It. And I'm just gonna put it on my finger. I should've got greatest gift maybe. No, this one's really pretty, totally worth it. I'm just gonna pop that right in the middle on top. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's really pretty. I like it. I like it a lot. This is also a new shade. It's called Milk and Cookies. And I thought it was going to be like a matte, but it's got some sheen to it. So I'm just going to put it up here. I really should learn to read because I'm sure it said that on the website. <laughs> and also when we were down there, they would make breakfast in the morning. Like all the women would get together in the kitchen and they would all pitch in and make breakfast. And there was everything, everything that you could want, they made it. So like there was homemade biscuits and gravy 
and fried eggs and bacon and sausage and pancakes and cereal. And I mean, it was like being at a buffet restaurant and they would make all this food and then it would all go to the middle of the table and then they'd call everybody and they'd come in and, and it, all the food would just get start passing around. I mean, they'd have like eggs on a platter and they'd just get passed around and everybody would eat this, right? Oh, and did you guys do this? They used to fry up all this bacon and be all this fat on it. And then they would like almost deep fry the eggs because they put the eggs in there to cook them. But you could just, you didn't even have to flip them. You just take the spatula and go like this and, and the grease would go up on top of the eggs and fry them. So one time when I was a little girl and I was learning to cook, my mom and dad were asleep. And of course, I was always impressed with how they did this down at the farm, right? And so I did that. I made eggs to put on a platter. Of course, I was young and I broke them all, <laughs> but put them on the platter. So I had like bacon and eggs um, and toast. Maybe I made biscuits from the can. I don't know. The point is I had this breakfast all made and I put it in the ta in the middle of the table, just like they did in Kentucky. <laughs> and then I went and, and my mom and dad were still asleep. <laughs> so... I went and started watching cartoons because I didn't want to wake them up. So just let them wake up when they wake up and then they can eat, right? But by the time they woke up, it was stone cold. Have you ever had stone cold fried eggs? Uh, <laughs> that was not the breakfast of their dreams. <laughs> you may have noticed that I'm mentioning some of your comments. I can't mention everybody's, but I do try to mention people who say things that remind me of something else and so cindy eldridge she was talking about how she would use plastic wrap um for her husband on his feet and hands you know under his boots his gloves or whatever to um, keep him warm and that reminded me that when my kids were little and now i cannot take credit for this okay i totally read this in one of the little house on the prairie books <laughs> But I thought it was ingenious and I thought it was a really good idea. And at the time, I mean, you can imagine with all them kids, we didn't have a lot of money at all. And so we made use of everything. So this one night it was gonna get down really cold and the kids were gonna have to stand at the bus stop in the cold. <laughs> and so I made baked potatoes and put them in the kids' pockets for when they went to the bus stop. That way they could put their hands in their pockets and keep warm. <laughs> so I didn't use plastic wrap, but I did use baked potatoes, food, okay? And then I, and I would tell them, don't throw that away, bring it back home with you. And then what I'd do is chop it up and we'd have fried taters <laughs> or just cut it up and make some potato salad with the potatoes. Obviously I was adding to these potatoes we didn't have 20 kids. Also, Anne had a question. She wants to know when was the first time that I had like moved somewhere and had a dishwasher. And um, I was 24 when I had my first dishwasher, but it reminded me of a funny story. <laughs> when I was a kid, we didn't have a dishwasher at our house. You know, neither did anyone else we knew. <laughs> Remember when there was door-to-door -door salesmen and they'd come around with the Kirby sweepers and stuff? Okay, well, this guy comes around and he's selling dishwashers and he asks my dad, do you guys have a dishwasher? And my dad said, yes, that we did. And well, the guy's like, cause probably the common answer was no, that they didn't have a dishwasher. So he asks my dad and my dad said, yes, that we did have a dishwasher. He's really peaked and wants to know, you know, how long have you had it? And my dad tells him, I don't know how many years he told him it's an old story. <laughs> Either the years don't jive, or that's a lot of years for a dishwasher or something. That kind of made me a little more glossy than I wanted to be. <laughs> the guy says, well, what is this? Uh, what's the brand name? What kind of dishwasher is it? And my dad says, it's uh, our last name. And the guy says, I ain't never heard of that. Do you care if I have a look? And dad said, I don't care. He brings him in the kitchen while I'm standing there doing dishes. <laughs> my dad's kind of quick-witted like that. <laughs> All right, I'm going to do my hair, I'll be right back. And I did come underneath my lid with one of the other new shades and that is Deliverer. I love the Christian names that they have in there. You know, like Redeemer, 
deliverer, you know, that stuff, greatest gift, you know, just stuff like that. Anyway, and I also took milk and cookies and came on the inside, loving that shade. Total mistake though. I was hunting something that would be more like Blanc type and ended up with milk and cookies. So, I mean, look, this is not like Blanc type at all. This has sheen to it. And I'm not mad at it either. <laughs> Tell me below, did any of the things that I said today, did they remind you of anything? Let me know, because I love reading your comments. I love getting to know you better. I love getting to know what you have to say. And on that note, I want you to know, if you don't already know, if you've never heard me say it before, you're the best part of the Fritzy family. And if you're not feeling like you're being blessed, then just go out and be a blessing to somebody else. Until next time, love you, see ya. Bye. And I'm out. Can you guys hear my stomach? It's like going. I'm sure that my stomach's tongue was also going. So about it. Long story. Long story. Estimate the power. Don't. Ow! <laughs> Bristles in my eye. Bristles in my eye. Now I cannot see. I'm telling you, I know this woman intimately. Well, not intimately. That's the wrong word I'm looking for here. What am I looking for here? Trust me when I tell you, I know this woman inside and out. No, I don't. That's not what I'm looking for either. I meant to, I meant to talk about this before I got to the eye makeup. I'm such a scarecrow. <laughs> that, I, what I was thinking was I don't have a brain and that makes me a scarecrow. <laughs> I gotta get moving because it is later than I think. <laughs> Do you guys love Louis Prima? Do you love that song? Enjoy yourself. It's later than you think. Enjoy yourself while you're still in the pink. The years go by as quickly as a wink. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy yourself. It's later than you think. Do you know that song? Big Band Era. Tap, tap, tapping on Mary's cheek. Tap, tap, tapping on Mary's cheek. Bob Evans down on the farm. That'll be $60,000, please, Bob Evans. <laughs> they would take all the fish that they caught. They caught the fish. They caught, they caught the fish. <clears throat> As part of his spiel, asks his dad, asks his dad. Yeah, his dad was at our house. That salesman was so surprised when he got there, his dad was sitting right in our living room. <laughs>